Welcome to the 73 year New York Knicks NBA Finals record. So the other day I was scrolling through Reddit and I came across a post by Quintel Woods and I'll leave his Reddit link post in the description box down below. But basically the title of his Reddit post was the 73 year NBA tradition that nobody knows about. Every single NBA Finals featured a player was a New York Knick at some point in his career. And I read that and my first thought was how does a team with only two NBA championships have a 73 year record of making the NBA Finals? And then my next thought was to actually look at the Reddit post and what I saw was pretty cool. So I wanted to share it with you guys on here. But once again, I did not make this list. Full credit goes to him. He did the research. So full credit to Woods and thank you for your awesome work. Before I get started, I just want to say a massive thanks to everybody for the support recently on this channel. I'm slowly starting to get back to YouTube and I'm so close to 250,000 subscribers. So I just want to say a massive, massive thank you guys for all your support. It helps me out so much. So I just appreciate that. Anyway, let's get it started. So as we all know, the Raptors and the Warriors are facing off in the NBA Finals. Raptors are up currently three games to one with a chance to win the NBA Finals. And what does that have to do with the New York Knicks? Well. Jeremy Lin. He's the answer to that question. Yeah, whilst he's only logged around 30 minutes through the entire playoffs all up this year, he's continued history by being the past New York Knicks player to make an NBA Finals each year since the 1946-1947 season. So let's rewind back to 1947. Okay, maybe let's not go that far. So I won't go through it, but you guys can look at the entire list in the description box down below. But we're going to start in 1970 because at least we're going to know a few plays from 1970. And that is when the New York Knicks won their first NBA championship. Sometimes an entire team can rise to the occasion together. In 1970, that team was the New York Knicks. Now, before I get started, though, if you want to challenge yourself, just guess, just guess who you think the player was for that specific season before I say it and put it in the comment section of what you got. It's harder than you think by the way, but to make it easier for you, start from the year 2000 and see how well you go. Okay, so now we're in 1970 and this was the first time the Knicks had made the finals and won, thanks to Willis Reed. With the series tied at 2-2, the Knicks would be tested in game 5. Willis Reed tore a muscle in his right leg in the second quarter and was lost for the rest of the game. Despite his absence, New York went on to win the game, rallying from a 16 point deficit. Without their injured captain, the Knicks lost in game 6, setting up one of the most famous moments in NBA history. Reed limped onto the court, before the 7th game determined to play through the pain of the injury. He ended up hitting 2 opening shots and that was it for the rest of the game. But that's all the Knicks needed. In 1971, the Bucks won the championship and they beat the Washington Bullets, in which Earl Monroe was a part of. In 1972, the Lakers beat the Knicks, so we'll just say it's Walt Fraser. In 1973, the Knicks won again, so we'll say it's Willis Reed. And in 1974, the Bucks versus the Celtics faced off in the NBA Finals. The Celtics won and Dick Garrett played for the Bucks. In 1975, it was the Warriors winning against the Bullets and Butch Beard played for the Warriors. In 1976, the Celtics beat the Suns and Dick Van Arsdale played for the Phoenix Suns. In 1977, it was the Blazers beating the Philadelphia 76ers with Henry Bibby playing for the Philadelphia 76ers. In 1978, it was the Washington Bullets versus the Seattle Supersonics and Marvin Webster played for Seattle. In 1979, it was the Seattle Supersonics once again versing the Bullets. This time, the Sonics got up and won the series whilst Lonnie Shelton was a member of the Knicks and the Supersonics. In 1980, it was the Lakers beating the Philadelphia 76ers, with Mo Cheeks being a member of the Philadelphia 76ers and the New York Knicks. In 1981, Gerald Henderson was a part of the Boston Celtics and they won the NBA championship against the Houston Rockets. Once again in 1982 and 1983, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Lakers played off in the NBA Finals. Lakers won in 82, 76ers won in 83, but Mo Cheeks played in both finals. In 1984, the Celtics beat the Lakers in the NBA Finals and Greg Kite was a member of the Knicks and the Boston Celtics. Rick Carlisle, yeah, that Rick Carlisle. In 1985, 
86 and 87, played in the NBA Finals. He was a member of the Celtics. They lost in 85, they won in 86, and they lost in 87 to the Lakers. In 1988, Tony Campbell played for the Lakers and they won the NBA championship against the Pistons and they lost the championship in 1989 to the Pistons and he was a member of that team and the New York Knicks. In 1990, Buck Williams played for the Blazers but they lost to the Pistons in the NBA Finals. In 1991, Bill Cartwright, a member of the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan's team, won the NBA championship against the Lakers and he was also a member of the New York Knicks. Back to Buck Williams in 1992, the Blazers lost to the Bulls, but he was a member of the New York Knicks at one point. In 1993, the Bulls versus the Suns in the NBA Finals, and Trent Tucker was a member of the Chicago Bulls. In 1994, it was the Rockets versus the Knicks, so obviously, Patrick Ewing, a member of the New York Knicks, they ended up losing, but shout out to Patrick Ewing. 1995, it was the Rockets versus the Magic, and Penny Hardaway was a member of the Orlando Magic, and then later on, in the New York Knicks. 1996, the Bulls vs Seattle Supersonics. Luke Longley was a member of the Knicks and the Bulls who won the NBA championship in 96. In 1997, Howard Isley played for the Utah Jazz and they lost to the Chicago Bulls in 97. He once played for the New York Knicks as well. Shannon Anderson the year after, because it was a back-to-back -back year with the Jazz and the Bulls, Shannon Anderson played for the Knicks and the Utah Jazz. In 1999, it was the Spurs vs the Knicks. Once again, the Knicks lost in the NBA Finals. And Larry Johnson, we're going to put him up there as the New York Knicks player. In the year 2000, Glenn Rice, a member of the Lakers versus the Pacers. The Lakers won the NBA championship. And yeah, that's Kanye West. So, never mind. Tell me they don't look the same though. In 2001, it was the Lakers versus Sixers in the NBA Finals, as we remember Allen Iverson. But Dikembe was on that team and he played for the New York Knicks as well. In 2002, it was the Nets versus the Lakers. The Nets lost, the Lakers won, Jason Kidd was a member of the Knicks and the New Jersey Nets. In 2003, Malik Rose, he played for the Spurs who beat the Nets in the NBA Finals. In 2004, it was the Pistons versus the Lakers in the NBA Finals. Rasheed Wallace played for the Pistons who won the NBA Championship and then later on as a member of the New York Knicks. In 2005, it was the Spurs versus the Pistons. Nazir Muhammad played for the Spurs and the Knicks and they won the NBA Championship. In 06, the Heat beat the Dallas Mavericks with Michael Dolak as a member of the Miami Heat, playing for the Knicks and the Miami Heat. In 07, the Spurs beat the Cavaliers with Jackie Butler as a member of the San Antonio Spurs and a young LeBron James team. In 2008, the Celtics faced off against the Lakers with the Celtics winning. Eddie House was a member of the Celtics and the New York Knicks. In 09, the Lakers redeemed themselves beating the Orlando Magic with Trevor Ariza making an NBA Finals and he was also a member of the New York Knicks. Once again, the Lakers win back-to-back -back championships in 2009, they beat the Celtics, and Nate Robinson was a part of the Celtics, later on a part of the New York Knicks as well. In 2011, Tyson Chandler was a member of the Dallas Mavericks who won the NBA championship against the Miami Heat, and he was also a member of the New York Knicks later on. In 2012, the Miami Heat beat the Oklahoma City Thunder with Eddie Curry being a member of the Heat, and he was also a member of the New York Knicks. In 2013, and this one was saved, Tracy McGrady, a member of the San Antonio Spurs who lost to the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. Tracy McGrady had also played for the New York Knicks. In 2014, the Spurs redeemed themselves. They beat the Heat. Tony Douglas was a member of the Miami Heat, and he also played for the New York Knicks as well. In 2015, the Golden State Warriors beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. David Lee was a great part of the Knicks, but he was also a great part of the Golden State Warriors who won the championship. In 2016, LeBron James finally got his redemption and won a championship for Cleveland. They beat the Warriors with Channing Frye being a member of the Cleveland Cavaliers and also a member of the New York Knicks. In 2017, the Warriors won the championship against the Cavs once again. Matt Barnes was a member of the Knicks and the Warriors. In 2018, once again, the Warriors won and they beat the Cavaliers. JRC Smith was a member of the Cavs, who was also a part of the New York Knicks. And in 2019, Jeremy Lin, a part of the Raptors who were facing the Warriors with a chance to win the NBA championship this year, he was a part of the New York Knicks as Lin Sanity. But what's crazy about all this is that if Kawhi never hit that Game 7 shot to beat the 76ers, and it was the 76ers and Bucks in the Conference Finals, whoever came out of that series would have ended this 72-year tradition. So I want to end with this quote from Quintel Woods himself, who said, Maybe the point is to appreciate guys like Dick Garrett, Rick Carlisle, who spent 26 games with the Knicks, ensuring the streak didn't die. 
in 1987. Or Slater Martin, whose 13 games with the Knicks allowed the streak to be four seasons long. And now, 69 years later, the streak carries on, thanks to Jeremy Lin. Maybe this is what Lin's sanity was all about. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Something that's a little bit different that I saw online and I thought it would be cool for you guys that didn't know about the streak to hear about the streak. So huge shout out to Woods whose link is in the description box down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new and be sure to turn on your notifications. Follow me on Instagram. Thanks for all the support and I'll see you in my next video. I am out. Peace.